tiny house prepper. Hi there, Bill here from Tiny House Prepper. <clears throat> Continuing on my work on the uh, the shed. And <clears throat> if you saw my last video, you know that we've had problems with rain here and it, it rained like every other day for the past two weeks, which kept the ground just wet enough that I couldn't get a machine and a backhoe in here without it sinking way down into the mud. We've had about a week now with no rain except for just a very small shower uh, in, the, in the middle of the afternoon yesterday, and I'm hoping that didn't do too much to uh, to make it muddy again. So I'm going to be trying today to finish the grading, and then I'm going to be digging the holes for the piers um, <coughs> for the foundation for the shed. Now this is under 200 square feet, so there is no uh, building inspector involved. I don't have to follow codes or anything like that. And in fact, you know, most people, when they build a small shed, they just put it right on the ground or they might just put it on a cinder block. But this is going to be a fairly substantial structure. It's uh, 12 by 16 and it's going to be, you know, real solid wood floor and walls and all that. It's going to be substantial and heavy. So I want to put at least some kind of a footer in it. Now, in this area, the, the code calls for the footers to be uh, 42 inches deep. Uh, I'm not going that deep. It doesn't really matter if this thing moves, uh, heaves a little bit in the frost. The only thing that might happen if it heaves too much is the door might not open or shut properly. But uh, anyway, I'm going to go down about 30 inches. Um, <clears throat> I just don't see any reason for a shed to go all the way down 42 inches. So I got the backhoe again this morning and hopefully I'll be able to get this done and uh, so right now I'm, I'm just laying out the, the corners of the building and where the footers are going to, going to be going, where the, the piers are going to be going. So here's the ground that still needs to finish grading. You can see grass is already starting to grow up on it. Hopefully we'll be able to get that smoothed out today. And right over here, you can see the flags there and here. These are the corners of the shed. There's one out there. So right now I'm laying out where the exactly where the shed is going to be and mark it on the ground. So I know where to dig. So there's the outline of the footprint of the sh of the shed. Notice that the corners, I extended the lines out past the corners so that when I start digging, because, you know, when I dig, the lines will disappear. But when I start digging, I'll still be able to see where the corners are because the lines are extended out past. It seems that it's still too soft to do any grading because I was actually able to smooth this out quite a bit, that worked, but every time I put the pad down, it makes this big huge hole that I'm going to have to fill up with a, with a shovel and a rake. I just can't be making holes like that all over the place. It's still too wet to hold the, the weight of the backhoe. So, I'll do what I can as far as the grading and then I'm going to be doing a lot of raking and shoveling, I'm afraid. But I can still dig the piers, which will be over here.
because I painted these lines on the ground and made a big X way out past the corners, I can actually use, I'm talking about this line, and there's one there, and over there. I can actually use those to sort of line this up by eye. You see the left side of the cinder block there is more or less lined up with the line here and there. That'll allow me to get placement for the piers that's pretty close. And then once I actually get them all set, like I have that one set over there. Now that's a little crooked on the line. I'll have to straighten it out a little bit. But once I get them all set, then I can put a tape measure on it and uh, make sure everything is exact and do the cross measurement diagonally to make sure everything is square and then we should be set. So now I have all six of the piers set and I'm doing them in, in cinder block. And what I've done here is put two cinder blocks down on the bottom and that makes a 16 inch pad and then put one thickness of cinder block on the way up to make that pier. And then we're filling it with concrete and there's an anchor bolt right there to bolt down the shed and I also dropped a piece of rebar down inside to make it a little bit stronger. Now the actual way to do this would have been to build a form down there and put a concrete footer that should have been probably at least 24 inches but the 16 inches and then those holes are filled with concrete. Oh Michael, you didn't fill this side. These holes here have to be filled with concrete. Like this one is. But when that's completely filled with concrete, then that makes a good solid pad for it to sit on. And it should give me the strength that I need. And this... Say hi, Michael. Hello there. This is Michael. He's my son-in-law. You've seen him in a couple of my other, at least one of my other videos. He's gracious enough to come over here and help this old man with his old back. <laughs> Mixing the concrete and shoveling it in. I need the exercise anyway. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so I dug the holes for the piers with the backhoe, but to backfill them, I'm actually going to be doing it all by hand. There's actually several reasons for that. It's going to be a lot of work, but one is that everything's so tight here that now that I have the holes in, it'd be hard to get the backhoe in here to backfill those without knocking these down. And the other is, since they're only one, uh, th one thickness of cinder block, if I put dirt in there, it could easily knock over the whole thing. So, and I don't want to budge them or move them in any way, so I'll be backfilling it by hand. Shouldn't be too bad, because the dirt, I just dug it up yesterday, and uh, the dirt is nice and soft, and so it should hopefully uh, dig easily.
another one ready for an anchor bolt. Okay. So that's what you can like fasten the wood to? Yeah, you put the sill plate down and bolt it down so it won't blow away in a hurricane. Good idea. <laughs> I'll see. Okay, getting the back filling all done now. So, Michael is filling his holes faster than I'm filling mine. And I finally figured out why. See my shovel? It's got this little piece broken off of the tip. I can't hold as much dirt on my shovel as he can hold on his. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're in trouble now. You better hurry up. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. <laughs> Oh, look at him go to town. You know what? This slides into the dirt easier with that sharp point on it than that one does. As this is kind of serrated. It's, re it's actually really nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, you both ended up happier. For cutting roots, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're starting to get filled in. See how it's coming together now. That's what the shed's going to sit on. Oh, it's a really beautiful day, thankfully. Sky couldn't be bluer. Hmm. Not a cloud. <laughs> it's really been nice to have the dirt get a chance to get drier. So here we are now, basically finished with the backfill. It's just the rough grade. We still have the final to do. See, we still got some dirt there and smooth it out a little bit more, but it's basically done. I just am really grateful that Michael could come over here and help me because the two of us did this in one afternoon by myself. It would have taken all week. <laughs> um, before he left, he suggested that I freak out the neighbors by writing, out, writing an epitaph on each one of these and putting a little stone or some flowers by each one. I, it just cracked me up. So anyway, so there we have the footers ready for the shed and uh, the next video will be the carpentry construction of the shed. So uh, if you're enjoying this, please like and subscribe and any comments below and I guess we'll see you next time. Bye bye.